Many video games today are brought to life by way of an excellent sound design and soundtrack. A lot of work goes into that portion for a game, and yet deadlines and other factors can have an unfortunate decision upsetting both the community and those personally affected by it. Doom Eternal's soundtrack is available to all those who have pre-ordered the Collector's Edition, but at what cost? In today's video, I'll be talking about the topic that has been going around about the soundtrack, the possibility of Mick Gordon now working on any future installments of Doom, and so on. If you are new here and love everything about Doom and similar content, then you are in the right place. Let's try to get this video up to 1000 likes, and by doing so will greatly help support the channel. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate all the support and dedication that there has been on here. The channel has come a long way and I hope to continue providing videos on the topic of Doom for quite some time. Alright, let's get started. Prior to the release of Doom Eternal, we all got a taste of how epic and metal the soundtrack was going to be. Just the demos and teasers really showed just how much of an improvement the music was compared to the soundtrack for Doom 2016. The music and sound design in the last game really set the bar and opened our minds on how satisfying it is to rip and tear demons apart while listening to metal. Many other musicians such as Andrew Holschult brought games like Dusk and A Medieval to life with his soundtracks and those games are awesome. If you haven't played them yet, do yourself a favor and get them now. Mick Gordon, on the other hand, has been in the gaming industry for quite some time and is amazing at what he does. His talent and thought process in terms of music just really blows my mind, and although there are many talented musicians throughout the world, he brings a certain flavor that would seem very difficult to replace. The soundtrack that we hear throughout Doom Eternal is all composed and recorded by him, and of course is edited a certain way to work within the game. However, once the soundtrack was released to the public, many audiophiles took notice to how different the tracks were compared to Doom 2016 and the music within the game. A person on Twitter by the name of That ACDC Guy did an in-depth investigation on some of the music such as BFG Division. He mentioned that the version from Doom 2016 had more dynamics, while the version from Eternal was way more compressed. For those who don't know much about music jargon, in simple terms, compression is a way to give more energy to the mix, or rather help a certain track get louder and noticed. However, if things are over compressed, then you have instruments fighting each other and can cause the sound to sound just horrible. For instance, audiophiles like me like to listen to files that are in FLAC format rather than MP3 because MP3 are usually compressed while FLAC files are lossless. Thankfully, the soundtrack has the option to listen to both FLAC and MP3. Obviously, another topic for another video. Anyway, as that ACDC guy explained his findings, Mick Gordon actually reached out to him and let him know that there were a lot of songs that he didn't get to personally mix himself. I did some listening myself to the soundtrack and found about 10 songs or so that only show Mick's name associated with the song when you play it. Some of them are the usual ones that stand out, such as The Only One They Fear Is You, Cultist Bass, Command and Control, Meat Hook, and Doom Eternal, which is the music that plays in the main menu. The rest of them are done by both Mick and Chad Mossholder, who is the audio director at id Software. Now one thing I want to point out is that none of the issues with the soundtrack could be Chad's fault. He has been with id Software for a good amount of time and has quite the track record. He has worked on Doom 2016, Wolfenstein, Prey, and Quake Champions, just to name a few. He also has some awards up his sleeve as well. Not to mention he's worked a considerable amount of time with Mick, so I would assume they would have a strong professional relationship with each other and are able to bounce ideas off each other based on their background in music and sound design. However, if you listen to some of the songs, they do feel rushed and oddly mixed. For a regular person, you may not even really notice or care about it, but over the years, many fans have grown to love Mick's work and expect the best. There could be a few main issues that cause this dilemma. The first thing I think it could be from would be the matter of Bethesda wanting to rush the soundtrack since it was initially delayed. Now of course I'm not throwing punches at Bethesda based on whatever the decision was made as it could just be from some higher ups or someone from marketing. If you think about it, it does make sense on why they wanted to rush it as they promised the soundtrack to be available to those who pre-ordered a $200 collector's edition. In terms of marketing it worked as the collector's edition was sold out almost immediately after they announced it. 
There were people that even bought them off of eBay for twice the price just so they could have the edition. Of course, not everyone bought the collector's edition solely for the soundtrack, but I would say for the Slayer helmet, which was honestly the main reason for me. I myself lucked out with a copy as someone canceled their pre-order within minutes. The point is that when you buy something, you expect to get everything that the product contains all at the same time. With the first delay, there could have been some issues with the collector's editions, among the other things that we knew about, and maybe Bethesda wanted to ensure that they could deliver everything all at once. Mixing and mastering music is a rigorous process and can take some time, especially with the amount of content that Mick had to work with. The soundtrack itself is over 200 minutes long, so there's a you know, decent amount of music. To get an idea on the timeline he could have been on, we first heard about the Metal Choir sometime in the summer of 2019. I would say that the majority of the songs feature the Metal Choir, and I wonder how the soundtrack would have been if the game came out in November. Another thing to point out is that the soundtrack for Doom 2016 was released months after the game came out. However, this time around it was only a month after. There really wasn't a need for rushing the soundtrack as right now most of us have nothing better to do but to stay at home and play the game and patiently wait for its release. So it may have had something to do with the idea of wanting the soundtrack to be available as soon as possible for those who paid the premium pre-order of the collector's edition. Maybe Bethesda felt like it was something unacceptable and wanted to be the hero. What do you guys think about that? The other idea that it could be is that there was some kind of disagreement between Mick and Bethesda. Someone else on social media reached out to Mick to find out more about this whole dilemma, and Mick responded to them as if he may not work with id Software in the future. Now, of course, id Software may have a great relationship with him, but Bethesda ultimately could have the final decision on many of the terms as they are the publisher, and even ZeniMax may be involved as well. If there was a disagreement of some kind, it's very possible. Let's be honest, being a freelancer of sorts has its benefits, but once you sign a contract or some type of agreement with a big name company, you have a lot less freedom to enjoy. Keep in mind, id Software didn't want metal at first in Doom 2016, so who really knows what somebody didn't want this time around? In my opinion, if there was something that someone didn't want Mick to do, then they must have been really stuck up or ignorant to realize how well Doom 2016 did because of the soundtrack. Huge box office movies with composers like Hans Zimmer or even John Williams make a lasting impression on those who experience them. Video games aren't really different and I have really enjoyed the soundtracks from other games like Halo and God of War among others. Mick has set the bar for the Doom franchise and the fans now expect his music to be in everything concerning Doom. Fortunately, we haven't heard anything official at this time, so it's still very possible that Mick may end up working for id Software down the road. Of course, I hope this was all just a misunderstanding and Mick will let us know more info soon. Something that I have been seeing on social media is the possibility of Doom surviving without Mick Gordon. So I guess the question is, will Doom survive without him? In my opinion, yes it will. Of course, he has done so much for this franchise and its fans, but at the end of it, Doom is eternal and will continue to be among the best shooters of all time. The original Doom games were successful and lived on, just like how future installments will do. It will be difficult to play a new Doom game without Mick Gordon, but because he has set the bar high, id Software will have no other choice but to find a composer somewhat equal to Mick. Chad Mossholder could potentially pull it off, or even Andrew Holschult. Both have a ton of experience and could make it work. I in no way want to say anything bad about Mick. This was all just an unfortunate event that we still don't fully understand and possibly may never get a full explanation. It will definitely be tough to play another Doom game without Mick, but as long as the gameplay, features, and other things that matter are better than the predecessor, we should be fine. I have faith that its software will make things work in the long run and will find someone to work with that could potentially set the bar even higher. For the time being, we should all just enjoy Doom Eternal and how the soundtrack sounds, even though it could be better. Mick will live on as a legend in the Doom community and will always be welcome to show us what he's got for any other video game in the future. All in all, what do you guys all think about this situation? Will it get better or will it get worse? Let's keep it civil in the comment section as like I've mentioned, we all don't really know the full story yet. Once we do, then have at it, I suppose. In the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed this video, and if so, be sure to like, subscribe, and share this video so we can get it out there more. With the end of my school semester, I should now be able to upload more videos more frequently and start working on videos for upcoming games like Cyberpunk and Halo Infinite. I am really looking forward to those games, but keep in mind I will always be talking about Doom as this channel was started because of Doom Eternal. Be sure to also check out my social media accounts at Rip and Terror Gaming to see other things over there as well. Like always, you guys are awesome, and until next time, fellow slayers, don't forget to rip and tear. Peace.